Hey guys, what is up? Redmaster here, and today bringing something a bit special than what I normally do. Um, so I had this idea, um, I know there hasn't been much variety on the channel lately, uh, kind of been on a strict routine, um, so I thought I might change it up. Um, I'm gonna be creating sort of these number rankings, like top 10, top 5 things from you know, every now and then to uh, kind of spice things up a little on the channel. So, I think for the first ranking, I am going to be ranking top 10, I mean I have 10, hidden combo decks I've made so far, going from 10 being the uh, worst, most ineffective, to 1, the best uh, that I've made so far. So, without further ado, let's get in to deck number 10. Coming in at number 10, we have the Titanic Wind deck. Now, this deck is on the bottom of the list for a number of reasons. Uh, one, it requires a certain card combination to work, so if you're not using that card combination, it kind of just becomes an ordinary obstacle deck. Uh, second, you don't see obstacle decks played that much in ranked, so you're actually you know, you're at a disadvantage seeing as how there's a lot of things that can easily overpower obstacles. Uh, these two factors really just primarily create the reason for this uh, making Titanic Wind probably uh, a number 10 on the list list. Coming in at number 9, we have the Awakened Wind deck. Uh, this deck generally was great, and at the time, could have been used very effectively, however, over the past changes of the game, this deck has become actually ineffective. Um, the Wind Mage's primary, uh, primary uh, role in this deck was to move the Suit of Armor into the OTK. However, now that Wind Mage's ability has been restructured, rechanged, um, this deck can no longer uh, perform at what it once was back when I first made it. Uh, despite it getting, actually, I think this is the third most popular hidden combos uh, viewed on the channel. Uh, but generally, since it's outdated and the changes to the game have altered this deck useless, that's why I gave it a number 9 on this list. Coming in at number 8, we have the Harmonic Range deck. Uh, this deck generally what it did is focus the abilities of harmonic balance with range cards to create these um, monstrous attacks for range units. Um, however, this deck only ranks at a number 8 due to its ineffectiveness and overall, e you know, it can be easily overrun. Um, the combination of low health kind of makes them easily susceptible to cards like Salahar Rider and Guardian even. Um, and ultimately, this deck requires a good amount of setup for it to actually start using its power, its high attack units. So, if you can pull that off, it can be very useful. However, it gets a number 8 generally because it's easily overrun and overpowered by most other decks on the meta ranking. Coming in at number 7 on the list, we're going to have our early punch deck. Um, when I made this deck... Uh, back a while ago, it was tested in single player, I mean, not the best test, but um, it was found to be effective in punching through kind of early and getting a lot of early damage off. Um, the reason why it's getting a number 7 on this list is just generally because it's not uh, useful, or it, cannot, it can be considered not as useful, seeing as how if you lose momentum or if you lose steam early, there may not be a way to recover and opening yourself up to the defeat. Um, I do like this deck though. I wish it could probably be revamped a little to compete uh, with the higher level decks. But again, that's still sort of under test and construction and all that. But I don't think it's going to be as strong just because it can lose momentum very quickly. Um, hence why it gets a number 7 on the At number 6, we have our Stealth Destruct deck. Um, getting into the better tiers of the list, so things be more positive for my decks from uh, the rest of this video. But um, regardless, 
this deck was useful. It was definitely fun to try out, play around with, to uh, just generally utilize the tactics of stealth to your advantage and kind of mess around with your opponent. Uh, the reason you get to number six, though, is because of the fact that it takes some setup time to do. And usually when, you're, when a deck has setup time, that means it focuses primarily towards late game. So things earlier, like, you know, dragons or maybe aura, they can take out this, um, this sneaky little deck. Um, if you're able to pull it off, though, it's very fun. Um, and the concept isn't that bad either. It's been done before, but, you know, with maybe different colors or different cards. Um, but overall, it gets a number six, again, primarily because it takes a lot of setup time in which some, some, you're, bleh, not some, in that time, you can get overrun and ultimately, uh, destroyed by, uh, <coughs> meta decks. At number five, we do have our HP damage deck. Um, this deck, again, sort of similar to Stealth Destruct, was very fun to play, and, you know, with all the, the mechanics that made this deck sort of what it is. Um, just generally the buildup of cards like Centaur into these massive 20 HP units, and then, you know, Spirit Crash or Hidden Intent them to make them ultimately uh, death dealers to the castle. Um, the reason this gets a number 5 on the list is because, sort of similar to Stealth Destruct, it does take a good amount of setup time for you to get the right amount of HP and uh, right amount of just primarily set up in your hand and on the field for you to pull off these uh, this combo particularly. Um, the reason though it goes above Stealth Destruct is because it's not as hard to maneuver Stealth Destruct. You have to be careful about where you position your stealth units or else your enemy is going to find them. This deck, you know where everything is. Um, you know, you, you're not waiting, you just, it's sort of like, or in the sense that you're putting HP on a unit a lot, however, you're not attacking with them, because attacking would be your primary, uh, your health would be your primary source of attack, is what I'm just trying to say. So, basically, again, it gets a number five, it's easy, because it's easily maneuverable, or more easily maneuverable than Stealth Destruct, and more effective than a lot of the other decks. Coming in at number four, we do have our Flux deck. Um, Flux deck is probably one of my favorite decks that I've produced out there, and I generally mean that. Uh, ever since I made this deck, I've actually been going around and uh, using it against different opponents to test out how effective it can be in the ranking scene. And I actually have, do like what I see. Um, the pro purpose is just to use get Flux out, put a lot of good health buffs on to make sure it doesn't die, Rampage and generally collect a lot of spell cards from this harv her, her harvest ability um, And again, it's more easily m maneuverable than some of the other decks I've outputted and also can be used You know, you don't have to rely on flux. You do have a variety of other options in this deck Guardian, Monk, Swordsman, Fencer, they can all receive the same amount of health buffs or and Rampage to do as much damage or even more as flux, so um, just one of my favorite decks that I've produced so far. It gets a number four on this list. It's more easily removable and has more synergy with the cards within the deck than some of my other decks have in the later or the lower parts of the list. Coming in at number three now, we are getting into the top three. Coming in at number three though is Swift Kraken. Now, some of you may be like, you know, what? Uh, you know, I think probably the fourth most popular viewed and one of the most effective decks I've produced out of this series is getting in only the number three slot and there are a couple of reasons behind that. I'll get to that as we go later in the list. However, this deck is on the number three slot because it is very, very effective. Um, back when I first made this deck and when I first published it, I had so many people telling me, you know, the combo is amazing, it works. Um, and generally just a whole lot of positive reviews of this deck came flooding in. And it's not a bad concept either. Um, the way you summon Kraken with the swiftness can also be a reason for victory. You have all these monsters coming out, dealing damage, etc. And it creates for a great aggressive deck with something a little sinister at the late game. 
Uh, this is just generally why I put uh, Swift Kraken at number three. He's a great card. Uh, or not a great card. He's a great, it's a great deck. And um, hopefully I can produce more decks that get positive reviews as much as this one did in the future. Coming in at number two now, we have the Matty Bounce deck. Now, the most po I think the most viewed hidden combos on my channel only gets a number two. Um, and by now you could probably have guessed what the number one is, but I'll explain why Matty Bounce has a higher place than some of the more effective decks uh, that my channel has produced. Matty gets a, you know, he get despite him being outdated and this deck sort of losing its momentum. Um, the reason why I put this deck where it is is because this was the first um, hidden combos video I did. It has a it has a special place within me for being the first hidden combos I've done and the first you know one of the more or one of the first videos that um, people really started to get into my channel and you know they stuck around to see what you uh, I would put in the future. And, you know, you guys are still here, you know, every time I put in combos, and, you know, I just want to thank this deck for being the Kickstarter to that. Not to mention, there's a bit of a funny side why I put him at number two. Um, shortly after this deck was made and published, um, I had people saying, you know, great, great deck, uh, great, I want to subscribe, I see where the channel's going, and um, I got one uh, pretty funny comment. Um... Someone actually commented uh, on the Discord, of course, not on the YouTube comments, that um, I was responsible for starting the Maddie craze. Uh, shortly after this deck was made, people started started to see a lot of more Maddies being played. You know, him summoning himself. Maybe this is back when uh, Maddie was able to summon like multiple copies of himself, so it kind of triggered a whole Maddie chain. Uh, <laughs> and um, I remember he just was telling me, you know, oh man, you you definitely caused all this Maddie craze, your video was definitely the start of all this Maddie's running around, and I was just like, I guess you're right, I, I don't know, um, but anyway, that's why Maddie gets a, um, this, the, uh, bleh, the number two spot on the list, and now, we go to number one. That's right, at number one, we do have the Monster Pirate deck. Uh, this deck got the number one slot, uh, slot, spot, uh, not being too old on the channel because of its high effectiveness. Uh, again, similar to Swift Kraken, when I released this video, I did get a lot of uh, reviews, positive reviews, saying that this deck is effective and maybe probably the best one I've outputted to the channel so far. Um, its general use of an underused card like Pirate Chip combined with the aggressive nature of monsters really made it for a hard-hitting deck and one that certainly surprised a lot of people. Um, but this is, this, there is another reason why this deck gets the number one slot. It's because it was the first deck I tested in a live match on film. So meaning that this deck can be proven effective through a live match, not like some of the other ones that I did. And that was the top 10 list of all of the hidden combo decks so far, guys. If you did enjoy, please make sure to hit that like button, maybe share it with a friend, and definitely comment down below, because I will be looking for top 10 video ideas in your comments, and hopefully maybe your ideas can be featured in the next top 10. But, until next time, guys, stay gaming. Yeah.